have the y-axis rails down. And if anybody's wondering, when I ordered these, not knowing much about building one of these uh, CNC routers, I kind of was looking at rails. I would, at first, I was going to home build my own. I've seen a lot of different ideas online how to do it, but I really wanted to get this build done a little quicker than it would take trying to build my own rails with bearings and uh, angle, or I mean, I've seen so many different ways. Um, I decided to spend the money and buy the linear fully supported rails with the bearings. Um, when I purchased these, I ended up getting the 16 millimeter. I was looking at 20 with the 16 for the X and the Z and a 20 for the bed, the y-axis. But I figured the way I built this, and I wasn't quite sure, you know, how much of a big of a difference is it gonna make? Um, I was a little worried they might be a little small, but I figured with the weight going down on the rails being fully supported also, that really I should have no problem. Uh, it saved a little money, of course, doing it with the smaller rails, but uh, I find it moves extremely well. I mean, I, I don't think I'm going to have any problems. It doesn't appear to be any slop, any play, the way I put it together, um, so I'm pretty happy with it. The only problem I have now, because I put the cart before the horse, or the horse before the car, however you say that. <laughs> anyway, I converted all my measurements on the rails with an online calculator um, from millimeters to inches to know what I would have. The y-axis is fine. I allowed, I went to the full inch. It come out, I'm not sure what it was. You know, um, I think it was like uh, four foot five, a half inch. So I'd go, okay, four foot six when I built the bed. And then I added, of course, the end plates. So I knew I had a little play. If anybody's wondering, these end plates aren't going to stay up like they are. I'll do a little more detailed video on that. I'm going to use a uh, router bit and I'm going to router down and follow the layout of this so both ends are open. So if I want to, if I have longer stock or anything I'm working on, I can just slide it in. Uh, but anyway, back to the rails. The problem I have here, forget the exact measurement of these, converted to inches, but it was like 59 60 fourths. I went to the full inch problem I'm having now, I am a sixteenth too narrow to fit my rails in. Don't ask me why, but <laughs> I figured going to the full inch would give me enough room. So I ended up taking my tape measure out, double checking the conversion, and they are actually a sixteenth over. And really, I only had about a sixteenth inch of play in here. So now they're a little tight. I'm not sure exactly. I know the support is all aluminum. Um, this is supposed to be a hardened steel. I'm going to have to take and try to grind just a little bit. Like this rail here, the support sticks out about a 30 second, I'm going to say. So if I could get away with just grinding that down a little bit with my grinder. And then this one here, that 16th is actually offset a little. So I'm going to have to try to grind that steel down just a little bit with my angle grinder. I'm not too worried about what it looks like as long as I can clean it up, get my bearings on good. Um, just so I can get them inside of here. As you can see, it almost goes 
so there's not much I have to take off. I just don't know about this deal. So that's the point I'm at now. I'm going to attempt to grind these and see what happens. So I've been slowly grinding on the ends of the rails for the x-axis so they'll fit in properly. Um, it's taken a little bit because I'm trying to be careful not to ruin them and take my time. Um, they're getting there, but I remembered in order to install these in there I'm going to also have the bearings on ahead of time. So in order to do that I need to make the back plate for the bearings so when I drop it in I can adjust everything and get it square so it slides back and forth freely. Uh, so what I did I was going to use a piece of MDF but I had a piece of birch plywood 3 quarter inch so I opted for the birch plywood um, I think it'll be better in the long run and I've made this piece 12 by 5 and a half and I'm hoping that allows me by the time I get to the ends of my x-axis to get 3 foot 1 inch of cutting area um, I'm sure it'll cut down a little bit but I'm pushing for the uh, 3 foot cutting area on the x I bought myself a Makita router, a brand new one, which I have over here, and that measures two and a half inches in diameter for my Z axis bracket. And that's the one I bought right there. So I'm figuring five and a half inches, that'll give me enough clamping area when I make my clamps on my Z axis. So I'll get these pre-drilled, countersunk, and installed on the backer board, and we'll be back.